So welcome to my YouTube channel, that's what we call The Good Life. Now today I'm going to be taking you for a tour around the allotment and what an exciting time of year this is. So many more things are happening and um, I can't wait to show you all. We'll also be announcing who's won the Vegiga raised bed as well so that's really exciting news as well so first of all um, if you've not already subscribed to my channel if you could please do so because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden my allotment and time to time my home kitchen now we might as well start at the top and work round so absolutely amazing artichokes these are doing absolutely beautifully now I think anyone who follows me knows that I struggle with what to do with them but I really must do something with them. I found some lovely dishes where you put lemon with them and roast them. Um, but if anyone's got any of their favourite recipes that they do with globe artichokes, I'd love to hear them. So buried in there is also my cooking apple tree where the artichokes have gone completely bonkers. I've got loads and loads of small apples on there which I am going to have to thin out but it's a little bit too soon for that at the moment. There'll be something called the June drop but quite a few will hopefully drop off anyway and then I'll thin out any that need to be done after that. And the same with my pear tree although not quite such a plentiful amount on there so it probably won't need thinning out as much that one but everything's all coming on nice nicely lots of lovely fruits being produced my rhubarb isn't doing quite as good this year but i'm still getting plenty of it and i do have more rhubarb at home i didn't put any um manure over it this year and i wonder whether that's what it was because after a little bit of googling it says sometimes it's lacking a little bit of nutrition if the stems are a little bit thin and sometimes it does sometimes just have a little rest and then bounce back again so it might just be normal to be fair and it has been a little bit dry so as we move down the raspberries are starting to fall. So I've got lots and lots of lovely raspberries. I've got various raspberries all up and around here. Um, it'll be a few more weeks yet, but once you start seeing the little raspberries fall, it often doesn't take that long. So that's one of my favorite things. I do love making raspberry jam and raspberry gin. So the cherry tree, well, it never really does that much. To be fair, the birds even peck the leaves, let alone the cherries. Um, I must get that covered really a little bit sooner. So you can't believe that they're that oh, Maybe the leaves taste of cherries as well. Who knows with these birds, but they'll have a go at anything. Um, my blackberry bush is doing really, really well. Lots of lovely blossom there. So obviously that will fruit a little bit later than the raspberries, but loads of beautiful, beautiful bloom on there. Absolutely amazing. So um, as we move down, I've got my gooseberries covered already because of the birds, because they will definitely have them. I had a friend message me. She had two gooseberry bushes. One was undercover and one wasn't, and she was wondering what was doing the damage. Guess what? The birds. So you really do have to cover them. So I have got some gooseberries in there. I wouldn't say it's the most plentiful amount of gooseberries this year, but there are definitely some gooseberries in there if you lift the, um, lift the leaves up. So quite how many I'll get this year, I don't know, but there are definitely a few there. My potatoes are doing really well. Um, they've been earthed up several times now, so a few more, quite a few more weeks before I can dig my first lot, I think, a little bit too soon. But as you can see, the, the blooms are starting to fall, so it's clear that something's going on underground, which is good. So all my seeds have germinated reasonably well. I'm going to have to get under here and do some weeding. I've got my beetroot in the first row which are coming on absolutely fantastically. I've got two small little rows of carrots there, which look like they've germinated really well, as have the weeds. Um, and I've got some lettuce, mixed lettuce salad leaves in there. And there are some parsnips that have germinated, but only a few at the moment. And like I said, one of my jobs on my list for the next week or so is definitely lift the netting off and give it a good weed. And I will, will, will most likely leave the rest of that uncovered now and put some mesh over the carrots to stop the, um, to stop the carrot fly. Um, I will put a link on this, um, on this in the description for the netting and the mesh as well. Um, we will put it up um, on the screen and it will be in the description as well. Um, because covering things this time of year is really essential. Um, if you buy big rolls of this green stuff, it just lasts for absolutely ages and it keeps the birds off. And the mesh keeps all sorts of things off, especially things like carrots because of um, carrot fly and also on things like your brassicas, the white fly. So. As we move over to the raised beds, the Ventica raised beds, it only seems appropriate um, that I announce who the winner is of these lovely raised beds. As you can see, I've planted mine up 
I've got some blueberries in there. I've got some status plants. I also squeezed a couple of cucumbers, which I intend to trial over the edge. I've never done anything like that before, but I had lots of cucumbers, so I thought I might, might as well give it a go. And in here, I've spread out some of my marigolds that I've got, and I've got various things that I've sown, only just sown, so nothing's germinated. I've got fennel, I've got carrots, and I've also got pak choy, and I've also put some radishes in there, but I didn't use the whole packet, so I couldn't put the label there. And the lucky winner of the Vesugo Rose Bed is Michelle from Urban Roots Allotment. I'm gonna put, she's actually got a YouTube channel herself, so I'm gonna pop her um, YouTube video in our description. So if you wanna check her out and see what she does with the rose bed when she gets it, that'd be awesome. And Michelle, we will contact you and let you know that you've won. Um, and I hope you really enjoy the rose bed as much as we do. Um, so that's really awesome to be able to announce that. So congratulations. So let's move down. Um, I've got my kale coming on really nicely here. As you can see, some of the leaves looked a little bit pale when I put them out, but they're all starting to green up now and starting to fill out, so that's really good. This is something um, that I've got double netted, so I've got EnviroMesh over this and the green netting because it protects it from the white fly and also butterflies. I find if I double net, it gives you that extra layer of, of protection. I know it seems like a little bit of an added extra, but I think it's worth it for your kale, and I do the same with my broccoli that's over there, um, because they're two that are really susceptible to both of those elements. And when I did it last year, they grew really, really successfully. So, um, my leeks will go there, but I've not put them out yet. Um, I've got some onions here. These are my spring planting onions. They're not doing too badly, um, these ones. Um, they got tapped by the birds. You can't cover everything forever, um, but there you go. Um, but they don't look too bad. It's been incredibly dry, so one thing I will say is we have had to start to water everything. Um, a couple of times a week at the moment. I don't know what it's like where you are at the moment, but it's been incredibly dry here, um, and we are just having to water a couple of times a week, which is a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. The rain will come, I'm sure, and we all won't have to water quite so much. Um, as we move over here, I've started putting a mixture of squashes and rosettes in. I've virtually got them all out. I will be putting a couple more in, um, but I've got so many different varieties. Um, I've got patty pan, courgettes, I've got Lebanese courgettes, I've got spaghetti squash, I've got table queen, I've got butternut squashes, um, I can't remember them all, I've got red hokado, which I can't pronounce very well, um, and we've also got yeah, more red hokado, I think I've got four in there, I've also got, what else have I got, harvest moon, which is a type of pumpkin, um, I've got potato squash, which is particularly lovely. It has got almost like a potato texture, so it is quite lovely. I grew them last year and we really love them. And um, they, they thicken the soups up a little bit more, so that's why we've grown them again. What else have I got? Um, I've got dumpling, which is one of my favourites, some of the small ones. I've got Turk's turban, I know I've got some of those in here, which are the very pretty ones. Oh, I've got some round, I've got round courgettes. Um, I've got ambassador, which are just like the long green ones. So I've got a real mixture. That's what I love about growing my own fruit and vegetables. It's all about growing different types that you can't easily get in the shops just to make your food more interesting. And I find all the different types of squashes and courgettes all have a slightly different taste or texture. Um, if you've got a particular one that you like, then can you please let us know in the comments because I might give it a go myself next year. If we move down. My green, my French green beans, unfortunately, I don't know whether it was the slugs or birds, um, but whatever happened, something had a really good nibble. Um, now, I, I was close to giving up. It was actually my son who said, now come on, mummy, I'm going to give them a water. Maybe I'll become the bean god, he joked as he did it. But lo and behold, they're sprouting. So I'm really glad that we did carry on watering them. I will probably um, germinate a few more and pop them in. Um, it was a little bit disappointing, but you know, it happens. But sometimes if you just leave them, they will re-sprout. Um, so don't be disheartened and just, just hang in there, as we say. Um, this side, I'm putting in some runner beans, which I'm doing today. So I'm gonna put the canes in. These are a multicoloured variety. 
of um, the beans are all green but the blooms are all different colours so some medley it's one of my favourites that I do so I think I've said before I soak the beans overnight in water I drain them off I put them between some damp tissue and lo and behold in a few days time lots of them have germinated and it, I often find that that just gives a much better rate of germination um, and then all I do I either use a dibber all depending how um, what the soil's like or a trail whatever and then I just drop them in the ground, so nothing too complicated. You try and put that bit towards the bottom, but don't get too worked up if it doesn't. I'm not going to do all these all on camera today because it will take too long, but you get the drift. Once they're germinated, it just makes life an awful lot easier um, to plant them in the ground. Um, it's just a really easy way of doing them. and not, You don't have to put them in modern trays then. And rather than just putting them in the ground where they can sometimes just rot, um, they're less likely to rot if you do it that way. So as we move over, I've got some dahlias here. Now these were a little bit late to the party going in the ground, but they have just started to peep through. So hopefully I will get some dahlias this year. I love dahlias because they flower right up until the frost. They're really lovely for cut flowers and they look just absolutely amazing. And the bees love them too. So that's really fantastic. So if we move up and look at what else we've got up here. So. So I've got the two types of onions. Those are the ones I put in in the spring, and these are the ones that I put in in the autumn. If you get any that start to do that on either of them, you just nip it off, okay? So it's just starting to bolt. It means they're fine, but they just probably won't get as big, um, and they won't keep as well if they've bolted. So there's nothing wrong with them. You don't have to throw them away or forget about them. You just have to think about that. If I'm honest, I think my overwintering onions are looking much better than the ones I put in in the spring. So it's just the way it goes. Hopefully I will still get some decent ones with the spring ones, but you get some winners and some losers, but they look like they've maybe got a bit of canker or something, but who knows? Onions can be a little bit temperamental, as can my garlic. I'm gonna to have to dig that up quite soon. But if I'm honest, um, I think they've got a little bit too rusty and I'm not sure how they're gonna be, but you know, as you can see, even for me, not everything works, but usually I do get plenty of food. I'm already eating some broad beans at home. I've got some peas at home. Um, I've had a handful of strawberries. I've got loads of lettuce. Um, and of course, there's always rhubarb this time of year if you've got a rhubarb plant. So as we move up, I've got my broccoli in here, which if you can see through, it's not do they're not doing too badly. I've got the odd plant. I think the two at the end, they don't look brilliant. But most of them all look like they're growing quite well. In fact, quite bizarrely, I've already got a little bit of broccoli on that one, which I wouldn't expect I to nip that off. Um, so yeah, they're not doing too badly. They've only been out a few weeks. Um, just having to keep them well watered because of obviously it's so incredibly dry. Um, but yeah, again, double netted because of the birds, the butterflies and the white fly. It normally does seem to do the trick. So as we move up, I've put my corn in here and um, this is to keep the squirrels away from them or the badgers or whatever eats our corn. There's much debate on the allotment. Anyone who follows me, lots of corn gets attacked on the allotment and there's much debate as to what wild creature does it. All we know is often the humans that don't get to eat an awful lot of it. So a few people have started putting theirs in enclosed covers like this. And because I had this already, I thought I'd give mine a go in there. So basically what I've done is I've weighted it all round. And once they really start to fall, then I'll really make sure that it's more secure. And hopefully, whatever it is, I think it's squirrels, but I don't like to shout it out too loud because other people will be shouting out that it's badgers. Um, but basically just trying to keep out whatever is trying to eat my sweet corn because I'd quite like to get quite a bit of it for myself. So as we move up, more of the other side of potatoes. And then we've got some black currants in here as you can see lots of lovely black currants they're all green at the moment um we can lift that off we've got lots in there really really lovely so obviously not ready to harvest yet we've got to wait for them to turn you know purple and then obviously we can we can harvest those as well but as you can see i think the birds have been eyeing these up already because there's a bit of bird poop on there i don't know but they can't get in because i've covered it or well, they would struggle they might be able to go underneath but they won't they won't put that much effort in usually so and then lastly i've got one more apple tree which have i got any apples on it ah oh, i have here so i've got a few apples as you can see here 
and I'm sure there's some more. If I'm honest, this has never been a terribly productive tree. Um, oh, some more down there. If I'm really honest, if I was ever going to buy any more apple trees again, I would probably buy better quality ones. These were quite cheap ones. I've got a really nice little apple tree at home in my front garden, which produces the most copious amount of apples. Um, and I think it's actually worth getting a decent apple tree. We're really lucky. We've got um, the Brogdale collection near us in Kent. Um, and that's where I got the apple tree that does really, really well. Um, these I just ordered off the internet and I think, I think it is worth paying a little bit more for decent apple trees. Now I really hope you've enjoyed my tour of the allotment and I'd love to know what your allotment's up to at the moment, anything you're doing, any questions you've got, as ever please do put them in the comments.